Hi, my name is Pamela Moulton, and I am a visual artist. And right now you are in my brother's garage, which I call the art shop, where we're building structures for the Temple Arts Commission, which are going in Payson Park. The process begins with searching for those materials, and it's not. It's there's so many different kinds of net. And you you know you want this certain net that can take paint, and you want um, and you're looking for different size mesh. I work with the lobster, the Gulf of Maine Lobster Foundation, and other ecological organizations. So they help me find the net. But there's there's a time involved and organization to get it all. And then, um, I, I always say that's when the project begins. The fishermen will contact me and then there's a giant heap of net and you can't move it physically. And you have to get an excavator and then you wind up cutting, you have to cut off sections so you're outside physically, you know, cutting off these pieces that then you have to put into trucks and then transport and, and then you get it and it's covered with, a lot of times it has fish scales and it's dirty and dusty and you have like a coat of dirt all over your studio. and. Um, and it's just physically a hard material to work with. So then what I do is I, I live with the material and um, often when I get it, I have to haul it to the car wash and I have to wash it in the car wash in the winter in the freezing cold. And once you have the material and it's clean and dry, then you have to figure out what to do with it. And the way I work is I take a material apart as much as I can. I just like, just take it down to until it's shredded into bits and then I put it back together and then I paint it and then I weave it and I so until I it takes me about a month to familiarize myself with the material and then I have to think about okay if I have collaborators how are they going to help me like I don't want to go in and do arts and crafts with the public I want the public to truly help in the creative process you have to always figure out how to make them successful so whatever they're doing whatever activity it is they feel like they're truly participating and they're successful and they're not getting bored and you also have to have um, and I'm sort of that way personally is you have to have a lot of different activities to do you don't just do one a lot of time preparing materials I do a lot of that I feel like a mother bird because I like chew up all the materials I cut them up I have to prepare them I sort them and then figure out what I'm going to do with them and then um, and then work with the students. And the collaborators, I'm a teaching artist, so I have uh, many schools that I already know, and so you start to create relationships with teachers. And, uh, and I also teach uh, students paired with, elder, paired with elders who are living with dementia, so I have that network, and then it just builds. I hope they will have picnics beneath the sculpture. I hope that it invites, um, I hope that people will see it from a distance and be like, whoo, what is that? The closer you get, the more you'll discover, and and um, I hope they'll they'll touch it and and move around underneath it. And um, I have these chairs that I've made that are related to each each chair is related to a sculpture. I think they'll be surprised to see what the material what they're made of. I think that's going to be like, oh my goodness, this is really made of materials that were at the bottom of the ocean, and just make them think. Maybe someone will do yoga or meditate, read a book. I mean, they're really, um, the elders from the Cedars are going to come down and just hang out. I know they are. They're just going to bring their sun, sun hats and just spend an afternoon sitting under this sculpture. So 